Hi everyone, welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, the fine people behind the PhotoshopUser.com website, the National Association itself, the Photoshop User Magazine, and which Photoshop World, and Photoshop World, and the NAP member website, and of all kinds of good stuff. It's all kinds of great stuff. I am Jessica Maldonado, here with Corey Barker, one Hello. of the Photoshop guys. How are you doing? I'm doing well. That's How are well. you? And we are in the thick of the holiday season. That's right. Are you feeling it? Mm. I'm was. getting there. I was, but no. <laughs> <laughs> it'll come back to me. All right. But uh, we, of course, uh, have a lot of great stuff uh, in store for the show, and uh, not to mention our great Peach Pit, uh, Peach Pit book deal. Right. We've got another one this week. It's actually a new one. It's, um, again, 40% off. A book is called Color, A Photographer's Guide to Directing. Is it two? To Directing the Eye, Creating Visual Depth, and Conveying Motion. That is the world's longest title I've ever heard. But it's by Jared Foster. Um, you can uh, check out at peachpit.com slash kelbytv. Use the coupon code, coupon code kelbytv. And that offer ends on December 16th. You can get 40% off, and that is for the ebook version, not the actual book, but the ebook version of that. Be sure to check that out at peachbit.com. Now, moving right along, Jessica is going to kick things off, and she's got something pretty cool. I actually saw uh, a little preview of this. Oh, I hope everyone likes it. Yep. So, what do you have? I see a face. It is yet another way to create masks in Photoshop, but we are going to make a cool, splashy effect. And I'm starting off with a photo from iStockphoto.com and I have a black and white layer here that I am going to then put my splash layers on top of and I am going to show you how to make one of these splash layers and to do so I have another iStock image and what I'm going to do is go up to select color range and it's already kind of picking up the colors here but I can take my eyedropper and just select kind of a middle red and fiddle with the range and the fuzziness until I like how much is going on here in my mask. And to go ahead and have a better preview of that, I'm going to change my selection preview to grayscale. And we are going to be using this as a mask to bring through the color from a duplicate background image. So what we want is some good whites because white will show through the most through the mask and black will show the least mm. and gray will show some tones but not as much. Now when we like how that looks, hit OK and on a new layer, hit D to bring your foreground and background colors back to the default of black and white and fill your selection with black. I'm going to hide the background layer and I'm going to go over to my channels and it doesn't really matter with this effect which channel you get, but since we are using a red splash, I'm going to take the red channel and drag that down to the page icon at the bottom of the channel palette and create a duplicate red channel. And lots of times you see us dragging layers to other files, but not too often do we drag channels, mm -hmm. but you can do that as well. So if I uh, command option shift and drag that to the layer that I'm using, it'll go right to the middle and pop up in my uh, channels palette. I see some areas around the edge are not quite white, so I'm gonna select those black areas and just fill those with white. And actually, I'm gonna invert this whole channel, Command-I or Control-I to invert the channel. And one more time, uh, Command-Click or Control-Click on the icon for your red channel, your red copy channel to make a selection of all these things that mm. we have on this channel. Now, you're not really going to see all this intricacy here, but it is selecting not just the black and whites, but all the grays. Mm -hmm. I'm going to click back on the RGB so that we can see everything, go back over to my Layers channel. I'm going to drag my background layer down to this page to make a duplicate of it, drag it up above the black and white layer, and all the while, I still have my selection made. And I'm going to go down to the, pa to the uh, mask icon here and make a mask using that splash that we just dragged over. Mm. If I, whoops, I'm on the wrong layer. If we drag that around, hello, yep. stay on this layer. Get your old layer on there. there if you drag that around right now, it's going to pull the background image with it. Mm -hmm. But. Command Z to put that back where we want it. If we unlock these 
and make sure the little white lines are around your mask. Just have your mask selected and now when you drag it around, or I like to do Command-T to make sure I'm just dragging that around, you are just going to be moving your mask. Mm. And when you get that sort of where you think you might want your splash to appear, hit Enter to commit to the transformation. Zoom in to kind of see it. And it's going to look a little better if we have our bevel and emboss on there. So I'm going to Option or Alt drag the effects onto that layer. And already you can kind of see that the splash is showing up over the face. And since it's on that full color layer, it is only showing through the areas where we have our cool red splash mask. And again, if these are unlocked, I can Command T and move this splash, warp it if I want to, have it fit around her face in any cool way that I want it to. Mm -hmm. And again, this is just a quick bevel and emboss. And I, for the um, shadow mode, I have changed it to linear burn instead of the default of multiply. And I picked up a skin tone in here just to give it sort of a little depth, a little painterly kind of look. And if you throw some type on that, you have a cool little uh, fashion type ad. Isn't that cool? And of course, you've done nothing to the original photo. You've merely made a duplicate of no, it. No, it's, it's just, just the way you're masking it. Sitting there on the bottom and showing the color through the other mm -hmm. layers. That's pretty cool. And again, mm -hmm. that's just do and, and using layer masks, of course, in a different way. And we know they're easy for creating composites, blending images, and such like that. But being able to blend, make duplicates of images like that, and then mm -hmm. just revealing the effect through various stages, that works really well. I like yep. that a lot. Pretty cool stuff. All right, uh, let's do this. Let's take a quick break. We're going to come back. I've got a little tip I'm going to share with you. We've got a few things to give away and other cool stuff like that. We'll be right back. All right, we are back, and we've got a few things to talk about here, actually. Um, right now, we're still having the gift program going on. What it is is if you are a NAP member and you want to have a friend or family member or whatever join NAP, you can actually get them the gift of a NAP membership. What does that do for you? It adds two more months to your existing membership. Oh, your friends will be so happy. You have so much happier friends. So <laughs> give the gift of Photoshop training. Check it out at photoshopuser.com and you can even go to photoshopuser.com slash promos and get more information on any other promos we have going yep. on. So be sure to check that out. In addition to that, be on the lookout uh, after the first of the year. We're going to start uh, getting the buzz going for the next Photoshop World, That's which is right. in Atlanta, Atlanta Georgia. Woo. First time ever we were in Atlanta. We've been jumping around all these different East Coast cities. Yep. And for the first time, we are going to be in Atlanta. We are very excited. Yes, so it's very exciting. Be on the lookout for uh, information regarding that over at Photoshop User. or be, It'll be at Photoshop User, but also at PhotoshopWorld.com. Be sure and check that out as well. Now, I have a really quick tip really fast. Um, kind of uh, playing on what you were talking about earlier about layer masking. Let's see. Inside Photoshop, it's if you go and make a selection, let's just say we mask this object here. I'm just going to option click the layer mask. No, I don't want to option click. I just want to click. So I just want to create that kind of oval look. Now, if you go and double click on the layer mask itself, you will open up the properties panel. I bet you didn't know that there was actually properties for a layer mask in the panel. Notice you here, you can actually go and change the density of it, which is just another way of saying the opacity of a layer mask, because if you bring it down lower, it just makes it more and more transparent all the way down until it sees everything there. So that's come in handy. What I like is actually the feather feature. If you wanted to have a soft vignette mm -hmm. um, on your mask, just increase the feathering setting here, and it actually softens those edges. Instead of you having to go in there and blur it and do all these different things, you can actually control that in here. And if you decide you don't like it, go back in here and just bring it back up and then you're back to where you started without having to go and replace the mask or anything like that. And below that, of course, you have other things like the refine edge. You can go in here and, and, and modify the mask using refine edge, use color range to modify the selection even further, and even invert the mask. Just by clicking that, it makes 
what's not visible, visible, and what's visible, not visible. <laughs> Does that make sense? I hope it does. Uh, and one last thing I wanted to show you with layer mask. If you are on a layer, don't necessarily like the layer mask, or you want to perhaps add another layer mask and keep what you've changed, you can actually drag your layer mask to the trash. And I think mine's going to see, mine's set up to where it just disappears, you know? Sometimes it will ask you if you want to get rid of the layer mask. But if you just drag the trash down there, I'm going to hold down the option key, and notice it will get rid of the layer mask without making any changes. But if I just drag it down, and let it go, you can see it commits the mask. Neat. So you have two different options there. So if you have a mask on there, you want to commit it because you want to do another effect to it, simply drag it to the trash and it will either disappear like that or it will prompt you and say, do you really want to delete this layer mask or just get rid of it or apply it, which means commit it, uh, that change to it. So yep. be careful of that. So um, just a little tips with layer masking. Layer masking is perhaps another one of the most powerful features when it comes to layers inside Photoshop. And you can definitely do yourself a favor by mastering uh, that as well. So I believe that's it. Is that all I have for you? Good tip, Corey. All right, thank I think you. we have a contest. We do have a contest. We have a giveaway. Uh, of course, we have a one-year NAP membership we're giving away uh, with every episode. But in addition to that, we have a new book. This one uh, is actually from my friend, Vincent Versace. It's called From Oz to Kanda Kansas. <laughs> Kansas. <laughs> Oz to Candace, almost every black and white conversion technique known to man. So if anybody knows anything about converting images to black and white, it certainly is Vincent Versace. He's a phenomenal photographer and a great teacher. So you get that in addition to uh, the NAP membership. Jessica, how may they get this prize? Come on over to kelbytv.com slash contest, and that will bring up our contest entry form. Make sure you select Photoshop user TV from the drop-down menu and give us your information, leave us a nice comment or whatever you'd like to say. Mm -hmm. We will certainly read the comments and that will enter you into the pool of contest entrants That's and right. we will choose one at random. At random and you will get those fabulous prizes. It's a good All prize. Right. So, I uh, believe that wraps up another episode for us this week. Thank you, Jessica, for joining us. Thank great you, tip, Corey. great with these splashes and you too. splashy things. She always does these cool, fashion y things. It's so cool. <laughs> and if you've ever seen any book that's come out of this company, chances are, it, no, there's no chance. It certainly was done by Jessica here because she does all the book covers. So be sure to check those out. All right. We want to leave you with it is the holiday season, so we will say, Hope everyone has a great holiday. We don't, I don't know if this is the last episode before Christmas. I think we got one more yeah. before the actual Christmas holiday. So until then, have a safe and happy holiday, and we will check you guys out next time. All right? Thank you. See Thank you next time. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>